I am dying to take the 62 series out and put it through its paces, see what a $500 Land Cruiser can do. But we just got some new snow up here in Idaho and I don't trust it, especially without a winch. So we're gonna take the 80 series out today, see what the old girl can do and see if we can't get into a little bit of trouble. All right, we came across our first little obstacle, kind of like a little gatekeeper here. Little off camber. This just keeps all the Subarus out, you know? Little rubbing, it's fine. Got a little bit of a creek coming through this uh, part of the trail, so just to make sure we don't slide off the low side and end up down there. And we're fine. And luckily, most of this snow is pretty soft. Uh, we're aired down to about maybe 25 PSI. Nothing too serious, but looks like we've got a little bit of a hill up ahead of us, so we'll try and give her the boonty. We're just in low range and center diff on. Don't have that seven pin mod yet, but no lockers. And I wonder if I can do this with one hand. Let's see. A little bit of ruts here. Try and straddle the rut. And she's eating it up. A little bouncy. And the hill just keeps going, so we're gonna give her the beans here. Oh, yeah. Ah, she loves it. Big wash out here on the left. We're gonna straddle this left side. Hopefully not hit that tree. And we're out of it, just like that. Good old 80 series. Well, we've got kind of a fun little obstacle up behind us here. That's never gonna come through on camera, the angle and the steepness of it, but I think it could be fun. Way to test the lockers and test out how well it's gonna go up that hill. So let's give it a shot. Try it from the side like this. <laughs> okay, one more time, let's try this again. There we go. This one shouldn't be that difficult, but it is a little bit steeper and a little off camber, so we just need to make sure we have enough momentum. All right, we're gonna have to send this one. Now that I'm tearing it up, it's becoming slicker than snot. I can hear a river on my right hand side, so I think I'm gonna be able to get into a nice campsite. I ran into some guys earlier on the trail and they told me that there are campsites of course, since it's winter, they're probably gonna be hard to see where it's marked and stuff, but I'd like to get a spot by the river, so let's see if we can find one. Well, this is looking very promising. Might be a little bit of work to get there, but I think I can get right up next to the river. Let's see what we can do. A little washout, should be able to clear this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, she loves it. And we'll just come right up here to the river. And this will be our campsite for the night. And somebody has made a really cool sculpture or carving out of this stump here. It looks like it's a dragon or something. I'm not really quite sure what it is. I would assume they made nostrils for like a dragon. And they made some like cool scales in the back here. So I'm assuming they made a dragon, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Kind of denotes the campsite, I would assume. So it's not the most level ground here, but I think right here I can make a nice little firm foundation out of this mossy stuff at least. It's the most level area around here. So we'll call this home for tonight.
All right, well, that's about as good as I care to get this thing set up as. It's not perfect. The guy lines are kind of all over the place, but it's not going to be that cold tonight, so the ceiling isn't as important as it was on that negative 20 degree night. And we'll get our stove all set up here. One thing I'm going to have to be cognizant of is this thing is just completely covered with ash and still has water in it, so I need to be sure to take off my boots before I go in this so that it doesn't develop mold over time. So this is a little hot stove I got off Amazon for a few hundred bucks. It's worked pretty good. I had an issue where it clogged in the last time I went camping, but that was just my fault for throwing stuff I shouldn't have into the wood stove. But we'll get this thing nice and nice and toasty tonight. problem is when this thing gets hot it melts the snow underneath it and then it starts sliding down so I want to make sure I have it in a good position before I start throwing stuff into the fire. I've got this Coleman cot that I used the last couple times and it's really great because it keeps you off the ground so it keeps you warmer because you're not contacting the ground. One thing though I've realized is there's not much space in here and you're constantly having to work around that pole. So instead of having a chair, I'm just going to use this as my chair. I'll throw my bedding on that and call it a day. Also got this nice little table. That'll go in the back. Do all my cooking and eating on this. Folds up really nice. Got these elastic bands on it, so just hook in those pegs, stretch it out, and voila. We've got everything we need right here. We can load wood after we process it. We can do all of our cooking right here. We can just kind of move down our cot for a seat. And pretty much all of this timber around me is not dead, it's living, so it's gonna be not dry. And I learned the hard way from last time that not having dry wood means that you don't stay warm. It's not gonna get that cold tonight, but we brought some firewood, so we're gonna process that. Other issue is we need to cut wood that's the length of this and not any longer because this door had to stay open because some of the logs are so long and then it spilled this tent with smoke and ash. And I was breathing it in. I'm probably gonna get cancer from that, so we don't wanna do that. I don't have my chainsaw anymore, but got this cool little handsaw that I got on Amazon. So it just folds out like this, locks in. I get scared every time I do this, like I'm gonna chop my hand off. And we'll go ahead and cut some of our logs that we have in here in half. Yeah, and this will be about the perfect size we need. So we'll just cut all this in half. All right, here's our current situation. We've got enough firewood for the night and we're gonna go ahead and start building a fire so we can cook our dinner. Uh, we got a little airsoft gun over there just in case any wolves come and make sure we're protected. And wolves are very afraid of airsoft guns. So bed slash chair, all of our cooking stuff slides under our table and it's nice and cozy in here. Guess my light's about ready to go out. Well, I just got super lucky because I almost ran out of lighter fluid, of butane with my little cigar lighter here, and I didn't bring a actual butane torch or any other device to get a fire started. So I was able to get it started. I had to use some motor oil and dip some of the logs in motor oil in order to get it to uh, start going, but I'm gonna have to watch this thing like a hawk so that I can make dinner and uh, make sure that it doesn't go out now because I have almost no lighter fluid left in this thing. So got lucky. I said a prayer right before I lit the final piece there and God answered. So thank you, Jesus. Cause otherwise that would mean no dinner and a cold night. All right. So for dinner tonight, I got some crab legs on the boil. Don't have any old bay, unfortunately, but I'm just going to cook some butter and dip them in that with a little bit of lemon. So that'll be the main course, but I've also got an MRE we're going to try out. Picked up at the local army surplus store. 
This one is pinto bean stew with ham. The guy that sold it to me said that the warmer is no good because this is almost 10 years old, but he assured me that it is still good. I feel like my stomach is going to regret this. We've got our cool Damascus steel Elkhorn knife. That's what I'll do all my cutting with. We'll get our lemon for our lemon butter. Cut a nice big chunk of butter. Throw that in our little tiny saucepan. And that was on there for a couple seconds and it's already melting, so that's good. Nice and hot. And we'll just put a little bit of lemon in that butter. So this is pretty much the view from the uh, campsite. Pretty awesome. I mean, it's right up against the water. I love the sound of ambient nature when I'm going to sleep and yeah, it's just right up against it. So pretty cool spot. It'll definitely be cool in the summer as well. So we got a little Chassagne Montrachet, which is a Chardonnay from Burgundy in France. This is a Premier Cru, which means it's a higher quality. So this should be good. Got a little wax top here, so we're gonna have to just dig in with our cork. I like French Chardonnay because it doesn't have as much malolactic fermentation, which is that kind of like buttery, oaky style you get from a lot of stuff in Napa and Sonoma. This is really clean and crisp. So I'm starting to realize, I think the issue is me with the fire. I wasn't processing the pieces of wood small enough like this one, and it was clogging up, not lighting, and just causing the fire to die. So we should be good from here on out because I'm out of butane. Yeah, so we're showing around 40 degrees outside and it's raining so it's not snowing it's not cold enough to snow but inside we're at like 90 degrees so we're cooking in here so in our mre it looks like we've got dried fruit powdered drink mix which i think is just gatorade nut raisin mix vegetable crackers and then our heating element. I don't think this is gonna work like he said, but we'll try it anyways. And then of course the pinto bean stew with ham. I don't really know if I even wanna try this, like, ugh. Oh, and there's some grape jelly to go on the crackers too. I guess I'll use that. Looks like caviar. I did this once before when I was in Utah. When I was visiting Vegas, I'm supposed to put this in here and then add water. Let's see if it actually works. Oh, I filled it too much. Oh well, we'll see what happens. Hopefully it doesn't blow up. It ain't working and I ain't about to eat some cold MRE. So we're going to go with some Dinty Moore beef stew. This reminds me of the very first time I was hunting when I was like 12 years old. This stuff is great. Stuff's also good because it like instantly puts you to bed. If you're having trouble sleeping, it's cold or whatever, just have some of this. You'll fall right asleep. That was a huge meal. I've got that itis. So I'm about to do some editing, head to sleep, and look for some more trails in the morning. So we'll see you soon. Well, I would definitely be lying if I said that I wasn't cold last night. This hot stove is great, but you have to maintain it constantly and trying to load wood in this while falling asleep is like a game like it's it's like a game of tetris of managing which logs you have in there and which what space you have and yeah it was interesting so it got cold last night and it's raining rain's moved in it's just kind of miserable it's hard to find motivation to pack up and get out of here when it's this cold what am I complaining about? Life could be worse. 
we're out in this beautiful scenery in Idaho, enjoying nature and four-wheeling. All right, I'm gonna get all this packed up and let's hit the trail. Well, the rain has just turned all of this snow into a, it's left a thin layer of ice and then you just kind of sink down. The plan is to just get out on the other side of this trail I'm following on Onyx. And I think I'm only about a mile or two from the main road, which will lead out to Priest Lake. Snow is so interesting because the conditions are always different. It depends, it changes throughout the day. And uh, you have to pay attention to that so you don't end up off the trail. It's working better for me to stay in high gear so that I can kind of float over or have a little bit more travel through each gear. It's so easy to just get randomly stuck in a rut here because you can't tell the depth of the snow. These are freshly trodden, but just one little couple feet to the right, couple feet to the left and you're off the trail and you're in this kind of berm. And it looks like we're almost to the main road. Most of the snow's cleared up, so we're gonna use this opportunity to go ahead and air up so we don't have to do it on the road. I always air up to about 35 to 37 PSI. What do you guys air up for on the road? I'm just using this same old Smitty built that I've had for years. It's filled up 40s and 37s for multiple years. Still running strong. Hello. Good, how are you? Good, uh, just like a cappuccino or a latte? Any flavor? No, thank you. Just, okay, yeah. Nice. Medi uh, 16 ounce, sorry. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You too. All right, guys, we are back on the road in Priest River. If you've stuck around this long, do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps out being able to make these videos and continue to pump out content. So, Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.